that you've joined me for the Bare Bones Biz six part business planning video series. Whew, long name, but a simple concept. I'm going to help you put a business plan together. Here's what we're going to do. I'll define business planning. What is business planning? So that you get a clear idea of what's going to be involved. And I'll demonstrate business planning. I'll show you some tools. I'll show you my business plan so you can get a clear concept of what a business plan involves and what it'll look like as you get your first draft of your business plan done. Okay, ready to go, go, go? Let me show you my business plan. Here it is. I keep it with me all the time. Mine's a little bit glamorous, but really, essentially, it's a, a three-ring binder. A three-ring binder, you can pick one up at Staples, is essential to this business planning process. Yeah, you could use an iPad, you can have all sorts of documents available on your computer, but going all old school with a three-ring binder allows you some low-tech, high-impact opportunities to share your plan wherever you go. If I were sitting on the plane next to Warren Buffett and he said to me, well, what do you do? I could tell him, I help people expand their own freedom, financial freedom, lifestyle freedom, through a profitable business of their own. I teach business planning. He'd say, wow, that's interesting. How do you do that? And I'd whip out my plan. So a business plan is how you communicate to yourself first and with others what it is that you want and what your committed actions are to help get. Isn't that easy? Super. Okay, so this is the business plan binder. And the business plan binder is going to be tabbed up with the different sections of your business plan. All right? So the, the different areas of your business in the bare bones biz vernacular, in my lingo, are as follows. Setting site, that's the executive visionary part of your business. You know, where are we going? Why? Who are we going to serve? That's in the setting site section. The next section of your business is called building the team. Who do I need on my team and what would they do? How do they work together? Who reports to whom? What are their responsibilities? That's the building the team section of your business plan. The next section I call making money. And in the making money section of your business plan, your business plan binder and of your business, in that section we talk about the financial plan. How are we going to make money doing this? What are our goals for sales and expenses and profitability? How much would I need to charge? We address that in the making money section of your plan. The next section is called getting it sold. That's where your marketing plan goes and your sales systems, whatever sales processes and systems you adopt will be stored in the getting it sold section of your business plan. Next up, getting it done. Getting it done helps you make good on your promises. This is where your top projects are stored and your procedures. The way I build a business plan, your business plan will develop and morph into an operational plan. That way the business plan gets used, gets engaged, is integral with day-to-day -day business at your company. And then the last section of your business plan I call making sure. Making sure is where we're going to house the, the, the tools, the systems that allow you to ask this question. Are we serving people with this business? Am I being served? Are my team members being served? Are my customers being well served? It's your quality assurance systems and they're stored in the making sure section of your business plan. So get a binder, tab it up. And then during the course of our video series, we're going to address each of these six sections of your business and lots more. So hang tight. Okay? The first section of your business plan is setting sight. Setting sight means looking at yourself in the mirror and asking big questions like, what do I want? All right? The setting site exercises will go in the setting site tab of your binder. And the very first one, and the most important one, is the perfect life exercise. Now the perfect life exercise goes like this. Spend some time, 10 minutes up to an hour, crafting a description of your perfect life. One day in the perfect life of you. Okay? What do you want? What will it look like? What will it smell like and taste like? Use all of your senses and start writing. What time would you wake up? What would you do? 
Would you go to work? If you went to work, would it be in a business of your own? And in a business of your own, what is it that you would do? What kind of gifts do you have that you could share? What products or services might you offer? Now, if you have a business already, that's great. Incorporate that if you love it. And if not, think about what you really, really, really want to do and give yourself permission to dream and write it down. When you write your moving thought to physical form, and you're going to store it in your biz plan binder. In fact, it's the first page in my business plan binder. As you read through this and update it and rewrite it, hopefully you'll be inspired. Michael Gerber says that your business should exist for one reason only, and that's to help you make your life purpose come true, your dreams come true for your own life, your business, your life should be integrated, not at odds with one another. So the perfect life exercise is perhaps the most important exercise in all of business planning because you allow yourself to dream and lay claim to what it is that you really want. One of my mentors used to say to me every day, plan or be planned for. If you're not clear about what you want, it's easy to become at the effect of someone else's plan. Maybe your vendors or your employees, your customers, your family members can take you off track and off course. The perfect life exercise is a good way for you to lay claim again to those things that you really, really want. Sometimes I ask my clients, well, if you're not happy with what you have, what is it that you do want? And they are stumped for an answer. How about you? Okay, dig into the perfect life exercise, write it down, and put it in your binder. Now, the setting site section of your business plan is going to include your perfect life exercise. It's also where you're going to write your mission statement, why your business should exist. It's where you'll craft a list of goals, the things that you want to have in your business, and your unique selling proposition. Unique selling proposition is where your idea for a business translates into what's in it for someone who would want to spend money with you. Your unique selling proposition is a short and sweet offering of your goods and services so that someone who hears what you have to offer would say, oh yeah, I think I want that. Here's some money in exchange for it. These big picture visionary questions and answers are what you write and put into the setting sites section of your business plan. Perfect life exercise is most important, and these other um, tools are designed to help you gain clarity about what you want this business to be. All right, here's some ideas too. If the idea of business appeals to you, but you're not sure what products or services you should offer, may I suggest the dirty job? I'm a big fan of the dirty job. This is how I define it. Dirty jobs are jobs that someone else is not skilled to do or doesn't want to do. I love home services. So if you're not sure what kind of business you might want to get into, think in terms of cleaning businesses, landscaping businesses, dog walking, anything that saves people time, energy, and money, there will always be a market for. And you can't outsource it, and I got news for you, it doesn't matter who's in office. So consider a dirty job if you're not sure what kind of business you want to do. Now, if you have a gift, um, if you are an artist, or if, like my husband, you're a guru with a certain skill set that is very, very valuable and you love doing that work, then by all means, create a business that is aligned with those gifts that you have to offer. And continue on with the business planning process. Okay, so that's a little description of what goes in the setting site section of your business plan. So, we're going to address the next section of your business plan, building the team. Now, even if you want to work all by yourself, you are going to need some other people in your life. My friend Nell Merlino from the amazing organization MakeMineAMillion.org, she says you can have it all as long as you don't do it all. Oh, how right she is. Even if your, your business vision is small, you want to be an artist and you want to sell your goods and services. That's terrific. But it might help to have a part-time subcontracted bookkeeper or an accountant. Maybe you'll need a lawyer. 
Maybe you'll need some vendors. There are still people that you're going to need to make things happen. Those activities, as you flesh out the team, the people you're going to need to help you, those activities we, we call building the team activities. And the tools that we use to help us craft our team go in the building the team section of your business plan. Now, you may have seen this before. That's called an organizational chart. Now, an organizational chart is a graphic description of positions, positions that are required to make this business run. All right, at the top of the org chart is one box with the leader's name in it, the king or the queen, and that would be you. There can only be one person at the top. That is an important lesson for businesses with family members to really get their arms around. One person is the buck stops here person at the top of the organizational chart. However, there is room for other people. And if your dream is to create an expanding organization with opportunities for a lot of folks, the organizational chart is a terrific tool to make that happen. You can build several versions of an organizational chart, where you are now with your business and where you want to be. When you first put an org chart together, and you put the king or queen on top, and you identify the different positions that may be required to run your company, mock it all up, draw it out, use a program like Excel or Visio, but create a visual representation of the team members, of the positions on the team. So you might have the uh, CSR, customer service rep, the dispatcher, the bookkeeper, the installer, the install manager, the salesperson, the sales manager, mock it all up and create the reporting relationships in a visual graphic uh, um, display. That's the organizational chart. For every position on the organizational chart, you can create a short, simple, bulleted list of responsibilities. If you, your name appears in that position, in that box on the org chart, what are you responsible for doing? That's a position description. Isn't this easy? Okay, so put together an org chart for your business, for where it is now, for where it could possibly grow to. And hey, if you've got big dreams for your business, but right now it's just you, it's all good. Put an org chart together and put your name in every box. Soon you'll be able to identify which box you could hand off. Maybe a part-time bookkeeper who also answers the phone could provide a lot of freedom for you. The organizational chart and the position description exercises will help you identify which positions you could hand off so that you could grow your empire. Isn't this great? Hey, one more piece of the puzzle for the building the team section of your business plan. Your org chart will show you know, the team members that you're going to need as either employees or um, subcontractors to help, help you grow your business. There are a couple other really important team members I want to bring up right now. How about if you put together a board of advisors and you find at least two people who will counsel you as you grow your business. A board of advisors is like your own personal board of directors. However, I recommend that you find people who will counsel you for free. You might turn right around and counsel them, but you might also investigate and find someone who will commit to answering your questions, helping you be successful because someone helped them once upon a time. You know, there is not a single successful business person out there who didn't get significant help from somebody else. And most successful people are honor bound to help someone. Why not make that someone you? So don't be shy. Ask, ask, ask until you find someone who will take you on as a protege and ask them to be a member of your board of advisors. Find at least two. Another person on your board of advisors or another way to find people for your board of advisors is to consider dead people. Yep, dead people. People like Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Jefferson or Jim Rohn or Ray Kroc. These guys wrote books. They wrote down leadership lessons. They wrote and created information for you to lay claim to 
even though they're dead and gone. So don't be afraid to put a few dead people on your board of advisors too. The building a team section of your business plan is where your org chart, your position descriptions, and your board of advisors, the list of those people who've committed to help you, are going to be stored. You can also put things like your general employee manual or any other human resources information that will help you flesh out the team section of your business, building the team. You can see again how this business plan will morph into an operations plan, something you'll really use to move you in the direction of your dreams. This is so much fun. So we've discussed setting site, building the team. Next up is making money, my favorite section. <laughs>